And because the city club is known as being the ultimate in fairness, the white line down the middle of the road, all the other things, the drawing for who will speak first and who will speak second, trying to figure out the most impartial way of doing it. So we have the business cards of that famous lawyer, Mike Bauer. Mike, raise, great, can give him a round of applause. Lawyers usually don't get too much round of applause. So, uh, uh, Paul, pick a card. Any card, right? Open it up. You speak first. Okay. Uh, Alex, just to show me. There was a number two. I believe <laughs> and Mike, uh, I will, I will uh, keep these personally in case I need a cab. In, 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 case, in case I need a cab. All right. So, uh, this is the rules for the uh, for the for the for the uh, debate. And uh, our famous timekeeper, Joy Saxon, I believe, is also on a mission to uh, Palm Beach, Florida. So, uh, your moderator taking on the dual task will also be the timekeeper. So candidates, uh, 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 I believe show, I, I, I believe it's a, either a Greek or an Italian word, uh, show the moderator a little Rachmanis. So we uh, uh, don't go, that's a, you gotta know the Latin derivation of that. Uh, so you can uh, uh, be fair. Opening statement will be 90 seconds long, the key issues facing Illinois' next treasurer. Then the candidates will, be asked a question by me, and then the, uh, they will have uh, uh, 90 seconds uh, uh, to, to uh, hmm, 90, 90 seconds, I'll make it up, 90 seconds to answer and 60 seconds to respond. Then each candidate will have a question for the other candidate. Uh, that'll be 30 seconds and uh, 90 seconds to respond. We have a microphone there. You can go to the microphone. We'll try and alternate questions. Uh, you'll ask a, a specific candidate, and we're going to rotate so each candidate gets the same amount of questions, 90 seconds to uh, respond, or to answer the question, and 60 seconds, the famous Jeff Berkowitz, 60 seconds to respond. And then last but not least, by the way, the debate will run much smoother than the introductions. Uh, why I would be my, bar, my party's best candidate for treasurer in November, each candidate will have a Closing statement of 90 seconds. Those are the rules, unless I change them. So, uh, <laughs> this is the city club. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our two candidates for today treasurer uh, for the Democratic Party nomination, we have Paul Mangiari, who is currently the uh, Knox County State's Attorney. Round of applause. <laughs> and we have Alexei Giannoulis, which is close enough. Uh, uh, oh, rumor has it is a banker. So, uh, due to the luck of the draw, otherwise now known as the Bauer draw, uh, Mr. Mangieri, you will have 90 seconds. You may speak from here, or more than welcome to speak from sitting down. That'll make it a lot easier. 90 seconds. Topic: the key issues facing Illinois' next treasurer, Mr. Mangieri. Well, thank you very much. And ladies and gentlemen, first let me uh, express my appreciation and thanks to the City Club of Chicago for sponsoring. Time out. Is that better now? Okay, thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being here. And uh, first, let me express my appreciation to the City Club of Chicago for sponsoring this debate, and also express my appreciation for Alexi uh, uh, in joining me here today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like to uh, think that there are three factors that, uh, as state treasurer, uh, I would concentrate upon as your state treasurer. I think the three. Uh, key issues facing your next Illinois State Treasurer are this. First, your statutory duty, which is to ensure the highest rate of return upon the money you invest on behalf of the people of the state of Illinois, at the same time keeping that amount of money that is liquid to pay your bills as they become due. Secondly, as State Treasurer, what I would like to emphasize, and I think it's a key issue for this particular office, is greater utilization of the office to spur economic development or to address community needs through a revitalization of the link deposit program. The third uh, key issue I think that we have to address as a state treasurer is the uh, issue concerning the unfunded liability of our state pension plans. Those are the three key areas that I see exist out there 
relative to your next state treasurer, and those are the three key areas that I would emphasize in my administration. Thank you very much. On time. Uh, Alexi, you have 90 seconds. Let me begin by thanking the City Club of Chicago and the very comical Dr. Paul Green uh, and my opponent, uh, Paul Mangieri. My name is Alexi Janulius and I'm the most qualified candidate for this office. I'm a banker, I'm a community banker, I come from a banking family, and after all, the state treasurer is the state's banker. My, par my parents, Greek immigrants, came to this country with the dream of starting their own business. And in 1979, my father founded Broadway Bank on the city's north side. Under my leadership as vice president, the bank has more than doubled in asset size into a financial institution with over $800 million in assets. Over the last four years, we've been the top performing bank in the state of Illinois. Over the last two years, we've been the top performing bank uh, in, this, in the United States. I manage both fixed income investment portfolios and loan portfolios. These are investments which represent over $700 million in depositor funds and capital. Just as it is the state treasurer's job to protect and invest the taxpayer's money, to achieve the highest rate of return, it's been mine to do the exact same for the depositors and investors of Broadway Bank. Now, the state treasurer is responsible for investing over $12 billion in taxpayer funds. And this state needs a financial manager during these difficult and trying economic times. The people of Illinois deserve a fiscal watchdog as their next state treasurer. Someone with economic experience, investment background, someone who will work hard to ensure that the citizens of Illinois are not regarded merely as taxpayers, but as owners and investors of this state and its assets. I know how to make money work. I have a track record of making money work. And I will make money work for the people of the state of Illinois. OK. Now comes, for me, one of the most exciting times, uh, my question. And I'm going to ask the same question to both candidates. Uh, Mr. Mangieri, you'll, you'll respond first, and then Mr. Giannullis. Uh What do these names have in common? Sharon Alter, are you taking notes? OK. Nancy Drew Sheehan, Daniel McLaughlin, Tom Dart. The second part of the question, what do these names have in common? Alan Dixon, Jerry Cosentino, James Donawald, Jerry Cosentino, Pat Quinn. All you Columbia students out there, aren't you lucky you're not in my class? The first set of names are the people that Judy Bartopinka beat right. the last three elections. The next list of names are the five Democrats who kept the state treasurer's office to, for a very, very long time. My question to both candidates, what in your background, in your ideas, in your candidacy will put you in the, on the list of the winners and not on the list of the losers? Paul, it's, a, it's, it, it's what is known as a, you know, low blow question, but this is a city club. Go right ahead. Okay. Folks, I'm going to move over here, too, because I see the timing clock is right here, so I can uh, reference that relative to my 90 seconds. Right ahead. Uh, relative to uh, that particular issue, uh, the three last unsuccessful Democratic candidates for the Office of State Treasurer and the list of those five who have been uh, successful. What I would share in common with those that have been successful is that none of them have been a banker. There has never been a banker that has been elected to the Office of State Treasurer. Not uh, Adlai Stevenson, not Alan Dixon, not uh, Mr. Donawald Costantino or Mr. Quinn. None of them have had that background. What they have had is something that I believe I possess, and that is life experiences and leadership skills. I think that's what sets those individuals apart. I think that's what I bring to this table respectfully more so than my worthy opponent. And that would be this. My life experiences are such that I am a leader. I believe that you, money, you manage money, you manage portfolios, but you must lead people. And at the state constitutional level of a constitutional officer, there's a clear line of demarcation between those who lead and those who manage. And I think that's what would make me successful in that particular position. Well, Paul talks about leadership. Uh, you know what Adlai Stevenson said about leadership. You can't lead a cavalry charge if you think you look silly on the horse. So leadership is important, but it has to be leadership relevant to the office. 
And Paul's been a state's attorney for a long time, so maybe he would make uh, a great attorney general. But this office is about financial know-how and fiscal experience. Could you imagine if someone ran for attorney general without being an attorney? Now, what Paul didn't mention is that uh, Pat Quinn was the director of revenue for the city of Chicago, the third largest city uh, in the United States. Judy Bartopinka was the first woman to ever serve on the Audit Commission in the state legislature. So uh, maybe it would be better if they were bankers, but they weren't. So what we need, what, what is important is to have someone with that financial experience, that investment background, and someone who's going to bring new ideas to the office. Today I'm proud to announce that we're going to be uh, starting a state savings program initiative to help people, uh, teach people about sp spending priorities, asset accumulation, uh, and how to save money for the future. I'll talk more in general about it. Uh, I see you got about four seconds left. Uh, but we'll be talking about that more uh, soon. But it is about someone who's going to bring new ideas, not about uh, their political experience. It's about a financial manager. Watch, it's working. Now we come to where the each candidate asks the other candidate a question. And we'll start off with Mr. Mangieri asking Mr. Giannoulis a question. Your question could only last 30 seconds. Not that I, you guys have been tremendous so far, but in the past we've had the question last longer than the answer. So uh, Mr. Berkowitz is over there. So uh, you have a 30, you have a 30 second uh, a question at the top, and then the, the other candidate, Alexei, you'll have uh, uh, 90 seconds to respond. Mr. Mangieri, your question. My question? Yes. Sure. Can you come up here. Alexei, I would respectfully suggest that you and I do have a common background. We both attended college. We both attended law school. Uh, we both engaged in other pursuits. You in semi-pro basketball, myself in serving the United States Navy uh, as a JAG Corps officer. Ultimately, at the point that you're at right now, uh, you've been involved in the banking business for a number of years. The question that is presented to me by many times when I'm out on the state is why he may have some financial knowledge, what governmental experience, what inner working knowledge do you have of how government works and how would you address that as a state treasurer? Again, I'm going to reiterate that this office, this race needs to be about proven financial experience and results. Uh, as I stated earlier, I'm the vice president of a bank which has over $800 million in assets. And under my leadership, it's been the number one bank in the state of Illinois for the past four years, one of the top performing banks in the United States. But these figures are not are abstract figures. These funds represent people's lives and people's futures. I've, I've come through on the trust that they've placed in me. I am prepared to be the state's chief investment officer and act as a financial watchdog for the people of the state. This is not about uh, being a politician. I think people, uh, in a lot of respects, have had enough with politicians running for uh, fiscal office. This is a fiscal office. It's not about I used to be this, I used to be that. It's about who can help get the best rate of return on the state's assets, on these $12 billion. Who's going to look at innovative programs, like looking at the way other states get higher rates of return? program like an online rate auction, similar to those used in Ohio, Maryland, and Georgia. People who are going to bring these innova innovative ideas uh, to the forefront. Answer, answer your question to Mr. Mayer. Uh, Paul, while I understand that you have legal experience as an attorney in the Navy and as a prosecutor, you have no financial uh, or investment experience. The state treasurer the chief investment officer for the state is responsible for protecting and investing over $12 billion in taxpayer dollars. You have stated that you don't think it's important for the state's chief financial officer to have any financial experience. Why don't you think it's important? Thank you. I appreciate the question. I uh, don't believe I have ever said that it's not important for the treasurer to have some type of financial experience. I think what I've always said and maintained is it's important that the next treasurer have a clear vision and have goals that uh, are clearly set forth in how that individual wishes to approach their particular administration. As I said before, I believe you manage money. You lead individuals. And like it or not, an elected office is an exercise in leadership. 
not management. Beyond that, the investment of the money for the people of the state of Illinois is such that is not speculative. By statute, by law, you are restricted in the uh, manner and method in which you're going to invest that money. A clear leader puts those people in place that has their own area to watch out for. And as the state treasurer, that's what I would do. I would lead and I would put those people in position of management uh, positions that uh, best complement their talents. Okay, audience participation time. Uh, the microphone is there if you want to ask a question. Uh, I know a lot of you are involved in one of the other campaigns, so uh, uh, if you prepare to sandbag somebody, uh, you have to state your actual name. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll start off, and the, uh, in order, well, the first question will go to Mr. Mangieri. If you have a question for Mr. Giannoulis, just take a step back and someone else will. But the first question is to Mr. Mangieri. He'll have a, a 90 sec a, a seconds to answer, and Mr. Giannoulis will have 60 seconds to respond. Yes, sir, Thank state you. your name. Salim al and I'm with the Healthcare Consortium of Illinois. But I'm a community activist, and I haven't decided who I want to vote for in, in the primary, and I'm a loyal Democrat. But I'm concerned about community investment. Uh, there has been a good record on the part of, of the treasurers in the last decade to make sure that there is some real community investment responsibility on the part of banks because one of the things that, that we find is that when you invest money in local banks, then they have money in order to help with hospital development, community projects, community development all over the place. How would you involve and what ideas do you have, if you have any, about how you would use your office to further community investment at the local level? And Jerry, you have 90 seconds. There's a wonderful program that exists right now, and I think both Lexi and I uh, appreciate uh, the potential of it. It's called the Link Deposit Program. The Link Deposit Program allows the treasurer the ability to invest money in local lending institutions and in your local communities. The uh, treasurer can agree to forego a higher rate of interest with the understanding that that particular bank will loan that money out at a lower rate of interest so as to help spur economic development or address a community need. And as I've traveled throughout the state of Illinois, I see that that is sorely needed. That has been uh, de-emphasized, if you will, under our current state treasurer. That was a program that was established by Adlai Stevenson. It was a program that was continued uh, with great vigor under all the previous uh, Democratic uh, state treasurers. Uh, Pat Quinn was the last. And that is a program that uh, is tailor-made to address that, uh, that concern, sir, that, that you've mentioned. And that's what uh, was my second issue facing uh, the state treasurer that I had on my agenda, that we have to revitalize the link deposit program so as to help spur economic development within our local communities or to use that money to address a local need. Thank you. 60 seconds to respond. Paul is right. We both do share a view of how important Lake Deposit Program is. The difference between Paul and I uh, is that as a lender, I've seen firsthand how lending to a community business and, and getting a business started, expanded, ad adding employees to their payrolls uh, can help people in, in a community in an area. And we have been traveling the state. And we have seen people like Jimmy Williams, uh, who owns McDonald's in Pontoon Beach, and Chuck Robinson, who's a car salesman in Freeport, people who need help with community reinvestment and community development. I'll tell you a brief story of how well the Link Deposit Program has worked and why we need someone with that lending experience to reinvigorate that office. Reggio's Pizza on the city's south side of Chicago, they went to get a loan over a decade ago. They were unable to secure financing through traditional sources. They went to the state treasurer's office. Through the link deposit program, they were able to secure a loan. To make a long story short, they're now the number one largest African-American-owned pizza manufacturing corporation in North America with plants in over 18 states, hundreds of jobs. These, these are hundreds of jobs that would not have existed if it was not for the state treasurer's office. These are the type of uh, community reinvestment and community development programs that we need to reinvigorate in the state of Illinois. A uh, question for Mr. Giannoulis. Uh, don't. Uh... Good afternoon, everyone. We're having discussion because my question is for Mr. Mangieri. And take I'm a step back. That's why I was going to take a step back. Ms. Reese, do you want to ask a question? You were in line. She seems to be yes. a little. Yes. No, sir. <laughs> sir, go ahead. Go ahead. Boy, that's a. Uh... This is to Mr. Giannoulis. 
This is to Mr. Giannoulis. Good thing we don't have three or four candidates. This could get very tough. Go right ahead. <laughs> Much has been made about uh, having a regional balance to the Democratic ticket. Uh, what do you feel is more important with regards to this race, whether or not we have regional bal balance within the ticket or the qualifications for the office? 90 seconds. Again, there is this argument that we need uh, geographical balance to the state's ticket. And frankly, there is merit to that argument, Senator. Uh, but to me, infinitely more important than where someone is from is what they're about and who the most qualified can to handle. Such an important office, $12 billion uh, is. And I'm glad that my opponent on the Jeff Berkowitz show shed, said the leadership has no zip code. And I agree with him wholeheartedly. It's about who the most qualified people for this office uh, are. So I'm from Chicago. Can't apologize for that. You can blame my parents for moving here. Uh, <laughs> but we need the most qualified candidates for this office. Thank you for your question, Senator. As stated, I've already been on record stating that uh, leadership knows no zip code. Uh, it is really about uh, leadership for the entire state of Illinois, and it matters not whether you're from the Chicago area, whether you're from Galesburg, or whether you're from downstate. Leadership is for the entire state. That's it. Now a question for Mr. Mangieri. Yes. yes, state your name, please. My name is Dr. Linda Culberson Abington. And even though I don't classify myself as a political activist or a community activist, I should say, I definitely am a staunch Democrat, and I do have concerns about the community. And my question deals with payday loans. What is your position on payday loans? 90 seconds. We have to ensure that we are not allowing the state of Illinois to operate with predatory loans or payday loans that's going to uh, further victimize, I think, those individuals within our communities that uh, need the most assistance. Uh, my personal experience is uh, I worked my way through college and law school, and I know what it's like to be broke on a Tuesday still waiting for a Friday payday. And thank God, to a great extent, there weren't payday loans available when I was working my way through college and law school. And so to the extent that uh, we have unscrupulous lenders that um, seek out to victimize individuals at a time when they're at their most need, we must address that and we must eradicate that practice. 60 seconds. Dr. Abington, thanks for your wonderful question. And again, I'm not here to bash my opponent. He's a very nice guy. Uh, but what he didn't tell you is that in 2002, he took $5,000 from the payday loan industry. So to say we're against it and take contributions from it, to me, uh, is contradictory by nature. Uh, payday loans are a huge problem in the state and throughout the country. That's why last year, uh, the state legislature, uh, thank you, Senator Kwame Raoul, uh, passed law to, to limit uh, payday loans. For people making 2 to 5% interest a day uh, on these loans. This is a form of predatory lending. But that's not the only form of predatory lending. We have uh, auto title loans. We have uh, redlining. We have tax refund loan. I see these commercials and I go crazy. These are people uh, who get exploited. People without the resource to know they're being exploited get taken advantage of. That's why I also believe, as I said earlier, that there needs to be a financial management program in the state treasurer's office. People need to be taught the importance of saving, savings. Looking at not paying 22% on a credit card bill. Pay your bills first before uh, you start buying a plasma screen TV. Think about the, your children's future and their children's future. Uh, and I think the state treasurer, as the state's banker, needs to be a consumer advocate for people. And by being someone who teaches them about financial management and spending priorities and asset accumulation, one third of all Americans have no financial assets. In the richest country in the world, to me, that's an astonishing figure. And that's something that I, would, I will help uh, to remedy. Question for uh, Mr. Giannoulis. Yeah, Lawrence Hayes, Chicago Communicator newspaper. Uh, my question is, in the past, you've said that uh, in terms of affirmative action, you oppose that, and also civil unions. Uh, then it's been said that your position has changed. Could you address that, and why did it change? Giannoulis, go ahead. 90 seconds. I think you're one place out of turn uh, that question sounds like it was uh, for Mr. Mangieri? Yes, it was. Okay, I oh, think the well, question is... 
Ms. Reese, could you ask a question I Mr. G. Well. <laughs> Boy, My we had three or four candidates here. Tough. Columbia kids keep note of this. Go right ahead. Please. My name is Judith Reese. I was a trustee of University of Illinois for 12 years, and my question is about uh, Governor Bogoyevich's, um subtraction, uh, removal of pension funds, uh, monies from the pension fund. I can tell you that the university faculty and staff are extremely, um, I, I don't think angry is not too strong a word extremely concerned about this. I would like to know if you support the governor's position or if you regard this as a raid on the pension funds as the Republicans charge. Mr. Thank you. Mr. Lewis, right? Yes, go right Doesn't ahead. matter. Whatever. Well, don't, don't say that it doesn't matter. Okay, well, <laughs> I, I don't care who goes first. You ask your question. I do agree with you. I think what's happened with our pension system is a tragedy. It's, this state has the most underfunded pension system in the United States. Over $40 billion of this state's debt is directly pension related. The next highest state is Ohio with $29.5 billion. That's a $10 billion difference between us and the second worst state. Uh, but the underfunded pension system is a structural problem. Uh, and I would like to reiterate my support for comprehensive structural pension uh, reform. And I think the Governor's Advisory Commission on Pension Benefits is a great place to start. Uh, one idea that's been thrown, uh, thrown out is to cap end of, end of year, end of career uh, pay raises for state employees at 3 or 5 percent. If you can end, put an end to these career uh, end sweeteners, uh, you can help save over $17 billion over the next 40 years. But again, we also have to be forward looking when it comes to pensions. And one idea is to invest Illinois uh, pension assets in the state of Illinois. Uh, if, you can, if we invest on Illinois' main streets instead of New York's Wall Street, we can save we can add over 7,000 jobs by 2013 and increase revenue to the state by $47 million. Uh, this pension rate or this pension holiday uh, is a travesty. And if we can immediately implement some of these ideas that the Governor's Commission has uh, and other ideas that help address the structural deficiencies in this pension system, uh, we can help reform this broken system and we can help uh, ensure that uh, state that pension-related expenditures do not uh, harm or diminish state spending for education, economic development, uh, special uh, services, and uh, health care. All right. 50 seconds. I appreciate the question, ma'am. That was the focus of one of my uh, previous news conferences that I held throughout the state relative to the issue of uh, uh, our pension plans. It's actually uh, 38.6 billion unfunded liability in the three state funded pension plans. What we have to do is we have to bear in mind that regardless of what the state does, uh, we have to do that. We have to pay those pensions. It's a constitutional mandate. What we have to do is we have to look at new revenue streams. We're not talking about tax increases. My experience has taught me this, that you can be innovative. One of the things I would propose is derivative shareholders lawsuits. If we can identify that money invested in the certain corporations like Enron, where the state of Illinois pension system lost some money as a result of the debacle there. I think we can go after that and try to recover that money. That's not going to fix everything, but it at least shows some type of new innovative way to attack the program or attack the problem, prob, problem relative to underfunding of state pensions. And I also think that we have to look at and bear in mind that uh, what we're looking at is uh, to the extent that uh, we want to continue to maintain, recruit, and uh, retain good teachers. We have to have the pension pro uh, program in effect. What was your question? The gentleman that wanted to ask the question to now. All right. And Jeff, you will close because after <laughs> you, any other question would be basically uh, irrelevant. State your name, sir. Yeah, Lawrence Hayes, Chicago Communicator. And my question was, you opposed affirmative action and uh, civil unions. Now they say that you are in, 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 um, in um, favor of them. What changed your mind? Okay. 90 seconds. Respectfully, sir, I don't know who it is that says that I've been opposed to those things, because I don't believe I've ever been on record as opposing civil unions. I support civil unions. To me, relative to that issue, you're either in favor 
of fairness or you're not. You're either prejudiced or you're not. And I choose not to be prejudiced, and I choose to be in favor of that. So I would recognize civil unions. I think if individuals care about one another, if they love one another, if it's an nurturing relationship, that's all that matters. Relative to affirmative action, uh, I would not be opposed to affirmative action as well. So I'm somewhat at a loss because I do not recall ever being placed in that particular position. Mr. Gino, to make this fair, you take you state your position on those two issues. Because you shouldn't be commenting on what his position is. Okay. Uh, I am for affirmative action uh, in every element. Uh, education, uh, public sector. Uh, I am for civil unions for same-sex couples. And I think, Paul, what they're referring to was the Vote Smart, uh, which you signed in 2002, saying you were against affirmative action and against civil unions uh, for same-sex couples. But I want to use the rest of my 40 seconds to talk about another initiative I have, and that's take a, a look at the Bright Star College Savings Program, a wide-scale audit of the Bright Star College Savings Program. This is a $1.6 billion fund with over 100,000 participants, which hasn't had a wide-scale audit uh, of its program in the last uh, six years since the program was initiated in 2000. Now in 2007, the current investment manager, which is Leg Mason, their contract is up, and no one's taking a look to see if their, if their rates of return are in line with those of other states, if the fees are in line with those of other states, if the current investment manager's uh, contract should be renewed. And I'm proud to say that I've called for a wide-scale audit of this uh, struggling college savings program. Okay. To close this part of the debate, Mr. Charm, Jeff Berkowitz, you have 20 <laughs> seconds to give your commercial, then ask your question. Jeff Berkowitz, host and producer of Public Affairs, airing every Monday night at 8.30 p.m. on cable channel 21 throughout the city of Chicago and in many Chicago metro suburbs on Comcast cable as well. This is to Mr. Giannoulis, if you, got, if you forgot. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mr. Giannoulis. Phone going off, not mine. Uh, as, you, as you know, there is, insist, there is a so-called pay-to-play system in Illinois. And as you know, the treasurer has a great deal to do with the pension boards. I believe I see pre he or she may sit on some boards. Certainly has the bully pulpit to influence how they operate. So not only is there pay-to-play in general, but there's a system in which many of those pension boards, if somebody wants to invest funds for them, they need to pay a placement fee, an introduction fee. That's pretty well known. You can take a look at the Joe Cari agreement in which it was reported that further there's a government official A, which the press pushes to be or points to as Governor Rod Blagojevich and his fundraisers alleging a, at least suggesting a, a kickback scheme of this money going into that campaign. As a candidate for treasurer, what do you think about those placement fees? What would you do about it? And would you like to comment on the role of Joe Kari and perhaps of Governor Rod Blagojevich and some of his fundraisers in that process? Jeff, it's good to see you again. Looks like you had a loaded question ready. Uh, there's about seven questions in there, so uh, sounds like you're trying to get a news story by asking me about the, the government. Seven-part answer. There you go. Uh, uh, I can tell you that there is, to address the, the, the initial part of your question, there is uh, a culture of, cor of corruption and of, and of pay-to-play politics, and that's why I'm glad to be the independent progressive candidate here. And if I win, I will not be beholden to anybody except for the citizens of the state of Illinois. I think what's happening with kickbacks and, and uh, the Salini loans, the ho Salini hotels, for example, and, and pension kickbacks uh, is a huge problem that needs to be resolved. That's why we need independent uh, leaders who come in office, people like Senator Barack Obama, like Congressman Jan Schakowsky, like Congressman Dan Davis, like Congressman Jesse Jackson Jr., all people who uh, have endorsed me, by the way. Uh, <laughs> but we need leaders who are going to be independent. So. Uh, as far as the pension system, the, the state charge does sit on three pension boards, the judicial, the general assembly, and the teachers. And I will uh, work hard to make sure that those are funded in, in the best way possible and funded in corporations uh, that act correctly what about, legally. What about Governor Rod Blagojevich? Is he involved? And what would you do about that and his Jeff, fundraisers? Jeff, 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 Jeff. You had your well, that was the question. And that was one of the seven you didn't answer. I don't know if Governor Blagojevich is involved.
60 seconds to answer the original question. I also would like to uh, state that uh, it's a difficult question with the seven parts, that either you do your job or you don't. I'm probably the only candidate in this race who has prosecuted individuals for corruption on both sides of the aisle. Prosecuted a Democratic township official for embezzlement of funds. I prosecuted a Republican county clerk for embezzlement of funds. Right knows no party affiliation. And so all you have to do is do your job and do it right. Now we come to the last part of the debate. We will reverse the order. Mr. Giannoulis will go first. The topic will have a 90 seconds, why I would be my party's best candidate for treasurer in November. I'm running for office because I believe in public service. Because I believe that people need to look out for one another, that individuals need to live outside themselves, make sacrifices, and be a part of a larger community. I believe this state needs intelligent, caring, and experienced leaders. I believe this state needs ambitious, energetic, compassionate, bright representatives who are going to work hard to bring innovative ideas and concerned, genuinely concerned voices to the offices they seek. I believe that we need leaders who run for office because they believe, they truly believe that they can make changes. I'm running for this office in particular because of my good friend and mentor, Senator Barack Obama. After working closely with him in his campaign, and seeing the hope and promise of a brighter future he brought to so many people's hearts, I was inspired to get involved myself. Now, Senator Obama and I share similar values and morals, and we both believe in the importance of in bringing a new brand of fresh and inspiring leadership to the state of Illinois. When he told me he would be endorsing my candidacy, I promised him that I would never waver in my inherent desire to help people at every level have better lives. That's why I'm running for state treasurer, and that's why we'll be the next state treasurer come November. Mr. Mangieri, you have 90 seconds. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate it. Again, I, I appreciate this gathering. I appreciate the opportunity to be before you. If you listen to Alexi's comments relative to why he got into politics, if you listen closely, you would swear that he was talking about why I got into politics. I've been uh, questioned relative to politics as usual, but for the very same reasons that my opponent expresses a desire to enter politics for the first time at a state constitutional level, I have done that in my own right. The question is, why would I be the best candidate for the party in November? That's because I have a proven, a proven track record of being successful in accomplishing things. The first Democrat in the history of Knox County to be elected to office. I was able to reach across party lines to get right-minded Republicans and independents to be convinced of the talents and the abilities that I had in that particular race. I can do the same come November. I can do the same relative to voters from every region throughout this state. I believe that my candidacy is one that will resonate with the voters and that I will reflect their will in Springfield. Thank you. On behalf of the City Club of Chicago, I want to thank both candidates, and uh, I know you're kind of busy, but you each have one year membership to the City Club of Chicago. There you go. After one year, you pay up. Uh, <laughs> you got two books on the history of the City Club of Chicago. When you look at some, some light reading on those long campaign trails, and if things get really rough and you're trying to fundraise, two City Club mugs. <laughs> Thank you, Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your participation. The debate is closed. The meeting is adjourned.